Yeah. Okay. Yep. Hey guys, so I wanted to share with you a recipe that Zach and I both make. It's chocolate chip cookies and it's like the best recipe that we've ever tried for chocolate chip cookies. We're kind of cookie fanatics around here so when I say this is the only cookie recipe that you will need, especially chocolate chips, I'm serious, like this one is the best and whenever we have friends over they're always like oh my gosh, <laughs> like with their mouths full, like what in the world? Um, they're so, they just love it. So I want to make these and possibly share at least some of them with some of my friends, but we'll see how many make it out our door. So if you guys want this recipe, you can find it down in the description box. I'll leave just all the information down there if I don't remember exactly what I'm supposed to do because I'm going by memory today. <laughs> uh, the first thing that you want is half a half a cup of butter so that's one stick of butter and I've melted it for about 30 seconds in the microwave so you want it just where there's still some solid pieces but mostly melted then I want to add some sugar to it and I'm gonna be beating that all together so I want to have my little measuring cup where I have one cup uh, so I can see exactly like how much. I think that the bigger cups that you use, if you only need a little bit, I usually get more and more inaccurate when I try that. I've got brown sugar. This is light brown sugar. And the total amount of sugar that you're gonna put in this is three quarters cup. So you want one quarter cup light brown sugar. I usually pour in too much and then try to fiddle with it. Um, and it's not so much of an exact science how much brown sugar you need to white sugar, but the total amount will equal three quarters cup. And I like to start with the light brown sugar because I wanna pack it down and then just add on top of it the white sugar. And that is just about one quarter, maybe a little bit more. White sugar. And then I'm just using my cup to measure out three quarters total sugar. So that's half a cup of white sugar. And I wanna mix that in with my butter. And at this point I'm also going to add the vanilla. And why I do that is because all of these ingredients can be mixed together as long as possible before I add the egg. Um, but right now, I'm gonna go ahead and mix this. Also, you can add as little or as much vanilla as you want to, but it's supposed to be around a teaspoon. Okay, now I'm gonna add my eggs. The reason why I waited to add my eggs until now is because just like any sort of whipped souffle or whatever, anything that is eggs, you don't wanna beat them too much. Um, and I think it's just one egg, isn't it, Zach? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so just one egg there. Some people think it's weird that I keep the shells in here, but I married into a farm family and they always did that and they were just fine. I was like, wow, that's actually a lot less fuss. So. Okay, wash my hands. Flour is next, so the idea is I want to mix all my dry stuff together first before adding it. Um, I'm just using all-purpose flour. I don't want anything self-rising. I've made that mistake before. <laughs> and it's kind of a guessing game with how much flour you want to add, but it's always good to be a little bit, like hold back on how much flour you put in originally you'll end up with about one and three quarters cups flour though. But, you know, obviously you can keep adding flour in case your dough is too wet. 
but it's really hard to do anything about it if your dough is too dry and it'll just be like play-doh balls <laughs> so i'm adding one and a half cups to start when zach and i first moved to nashville I mean, any time that you move, I think it's one of those really hard moments in life. And so chocolate chip cookies got us through the first couple months. <laughs> so when we didn't know like where a lot of the good rest restaurants were or anything, we would just stay at home, make chocolate chip cookies. And it was like quite a comfort thing. And yeah, it added a little to the old waistline, but that's okay. <laughs> it was much needed at the time. It's also one of those memories we have like this is always something now we make for special occasions or for friends. Okay, so that's right around one and a half cups. I have <laughs> the funniest tablespoons and teaspoons. Half of them aren't even labeled anymore. I really need to upgrade. I put it on my Christmas wish list um, that I sent out to family and friends like, please help <laughs> um, because they are really funny. Okay, so I'm using my quarter teaspoon and I want to add salt and baking soda. So the first thing I'm adding is salt. Not that it's worth talking about what my dietician recommends when I'm, make, I'm making cookies, but um, <laughs> she wants me to use pink Himalayan salt. So that's what I do, even when I'm making cookies. So I want about one quarter teaspoon salt you don't have to use pink Himalayan, but that's what we do. And then I just use the quarter teaspoon twice for my baking soda, just because this is not fancy. This is how I use my baking soda. I just like dig deeper and deeper into it. <laughs> um, but when I first started, I could only fit my quarter teaspoon in there. And um, so yeah, I just do that twice. And I sort of bounce my finger on the teaspoon just so that I can like try to spread it out and sift it in there more. It's really important that I mix these things all together dry first because if I didn't, what would happen is I'd have one really salty cookie or like one really big cookie and the rest are flat. So if I can mix it into the flour a little bit preemptively, then it spreads into the dough really well. And then I'm going to add it to my dough and mix it all together. I do about half of the flour at a time so I don't make a mess. Get it started. This also helps me not make a mess if I can just sort of spread it in like that. And of course when baking soda is involved, I don't want to beat it too long, hardly at all. So the last thing is the chocolate chips. I'm guessing it would be fine if you wanted to add things like nuts or switch out the chocolate chips for M&Ms or whatever else. But I'm going with just the standard chocolate chip cookie. These are semi-sweet and I use um, half a bag. So that's about a cup. Uh, but again, this is relative to the dough and just it's fun. And I don't want to be too precise. So that's just about it. I will be precise later and I'll, I'll show you guys what I mean. So I think I can add a little bit more flour now that I'm looking at it. Again, it's good to go light on the flour until you reach the right consistency. I basically want to get it to where I can roll them in a ball and I don't want it to stick to my hands too much either. So you'll know if you added too much if you end up having clean beaters because that's usually when it's too play-doh-y. 
So that's a lot better. It doesn't look too whip, like whipped cream or anything. It looks more like clumpy and something that I could roll pretty easily. It's very scientific. <laughs> All right, so the oven, I'm putting it at 350. And it's just like the standard cookie amount. Um, and I'll show you how I like time it just right and flip it because I have an old oven and it, it's precise. <laughs> it's something you have a relationship with and under, you understand each other. <laughs> the next thing that I want to do is make some room because I'm going to be using my scale and measuring out the amounts. Also, I'm going to need one, at least one pan. All right, so I use a scale because I don't like to have like one really big cookie and then one that's too small. <laughs> this also helps them cook correct, correctly as well. So I want them each to be about 2.0 ounces, but I basically wanna just have 12 cookies. So if you don't have a scale, that's kind of what you want is 12 even cookies. See, that's pretty clean on my hands. I could have added probably just a little bit more flour. Too much. Here. I also use parchment paper to cook my cookies. I don't know what I was doing before parchment paper, but it is a life changer. I've used even those little, um, little sheets that you can put on top of your cookie sheet. And I think those are okay, but I just really prefer parchment paper. I think there's just something to it that makes for a really good bake. All right. Okay, so I have a little bit more time. So I'm gonna keep going on making all 12 today. I think what makes a really good chocolate chip cookie is something that is like a little bit fluffy, maybe um, not too overdone on the bottom. And I really like warm cookies, so I usually make them to be really good, like right out of the oven. These ones actually are really good the next day too, because if they cook just right, they will be kind of have a little bit of a hard crust on the outside, but they're really soft on the inside, but not overdone or too doughy. So they're just really perfect. Um, I can link you guys to the original recipe that we found, but we've adapted it to kind of be our own since then. But I liked that article a lot because it kind of showed the chemistry of cookies. So if you're into that kind of thing, I know I am. <laughs> I like to know exactly like why my cookies are falling short if they're too, like it, it'll make such a difference on even just how melted your butter is or maybe you use salted or unsalted butter. I like to use unsalted butter and then add a, oops, and then add a little bit of salt to it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these ones in while I finish the others. And then I like to cook mine for five and a half minutes, then flip them, like turn the pan, and we're gonna cook them for another five and a half minutes. So it's a total of 11 minutes. You want anywhere from like nine to 11 minutes. I know that my friend tried this recipe and it was just a little bit uh, too overdone for her for 11 minutes, so you can watch it. Yeah, so like every oven is different. Um, mine likes to cook a lot more in the back than it does the front, so that's why I flip mine. 2.3. I think having a scale made a big difference in my kitchen too. Um, you know, like you can be a little bit too precise and everything, but I think whenever you're talking about baking, can make a really big difference. I know a lot of professional chefs will even weigh their flour and everything else. I just like to use cups for that. But I can definitely see why that would be even more accurate than say like trying to meet a line on 
a measuring cup. And I do have a little bit left over, so I don't know, maybe I'll make a tiny cookie with it. <laughs> I don't really like to eat this much dough. That's like 1.7, so that'll be my tiny cookie. Actually, I don't think I weighed this one, so let's see. Yeah, that one was a little short too. So I have two tiny cookies. Okay, almost time to flip them. So they should still kind of be balls at this point. And minute timer is another five and a half. And then we wait. It already smells amazing in here with the cookies. And then also I have some essential oils going that's like more in the spruces and lots of like evergreen scents. So it's like so perfect to have the scents of Christmas with my cookies. All right, so sometimes I give them another minute, but these ones are looking okay. They're not wet on top. I could go darker, it's just really preference. I think that one might be a little underdone. Okay, I'm giving them another 30. It might be because I've been leaving my oven open a little bit more. <laughs> and I also turn off the oven every time, but that is an accident. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, that looks a lot better. It's a little bit more golden brown. So that's what you want them to look like. See how they're not too flat, um, evenly spaced. They're not going to be too brown on the bottom either. They're gonna just be perfect. So what I like to do, and this is really simple to move them off. This is not hot, so I just go like that. And the parchment paper helps it too because if I didn't have that there, sometimes when they're too doughy, they might start to get clumpy on the grid here um, that's on my cookie sheets. Timer, five minutes and a half. And we'll wait on those. Um, but yeah, I'm not opposed to eating these right out of the oven if I have maybe some cold oat milk. <laughs> with them <laughs> or iced coffee. I love having like black coffee with a cookie just because it's like the bitter and the sweet together is amazing. But yeah, this is the perfect cookie recipe. It's something that I love to bring if I'm like going to somebody's house. I'm like, I'm bringing the cookies. <laughs> um, but also I just think that having a classic like this is something you know everybody will like. Uh, they're not surprised by having raisins in there when they think they're chocolate chips. Like they're just a good, honest chocolate chip cookie. You could even play with, if you want chocolate chip cookies that are the chunks of chocolate chips or little mini ones. Uh, but I just like the standard size, something that's sort of, actually I think these ones are a little bit bigger now that I see them, but anyways. And five and a half more minutes there. While I'm cooking that, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys what these ones look like when they're pretty much about done. This has been sitting out for, I guess, about six minutes now. And they're pretty much hardened and ready to eat. Um, they're golden brown on the bottom. And then on the inside, that's what you want. You know, something that isn't too overbaked or underbaked. And then the outside has this little bit of a crust to it. So, yep, that is the perfect chocolate chip cookie. Of course, ovens vary. You could go a little darker on these if you just like that. Um, everybody's preferences are different there. I know I like doughy cookies and Zach likes them to be almost overdone in my humble opinion. <laughs> 
anyways <laughs> i guess i can end here though so yeah i'll link everything down below as far as the recipe i originally found it from the adaptations that i made i'll write down every ingredient down below so you can shop quickly and just get what you need and yeah, I can even maybe link you to some of the measuring spoons on my wish list that I wish I had and probably need to upgrade. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you like these sort of baking videos. It's fun to sort of mix up my content and also bring you things that I eat regularly and um, also I, I probably shouldn't eat these as many times as I do, but it is what it is. So uh, yeah, I guess I will see you guys next time. Okay. Yep. Disappear